Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another HM1 in 2021. Today, we're going to be going over chapter three of the Corman Manual. So, this one's all about healthcare admin programs. This chapter specifically is super important because usually healthcare admin is one of the, uh, I, I don't want to say usually, I'm pretty sure always since I've been taking the exam, healthcare admin has been one of the subtopics or one of the main topics. And this chapter actually was, to my surprise when I was reading it, has a giant snapshot of the different things. Like even a lot of the instructions that were on the bibs under the healthcare admin program were also referenced in this chapter. So it's something interesting to think about. Um, if you're on your last minute study, just study the, um, the subtopics that have either the chapter or study the references that are either named like the chapter of a subtopic or are obviously part of it. So let's kick out into this one. So much information are now in EMRs, electronic medical record. If any of you guys get your undercare, undergrad in like healthcare management, you will learn a lot about EMRs. Um, Alta, Armed Forces Health Longitude Technology Application, which eventually is going away to Genesis. Um, HIPAA, you've had to do that training many, many times. Privacy Act, Freedom of Information. And only give info to people for need to know. Sponsor is the name of the um, prime beneficiary. Not always active duty folk because it can also be, um, the sponsor can also be a retiree or some other circumstances, but Typically military medicine, the sponsors act duty folk. Let's see. Yeah, role of the HN, a lot of obvious stuff there. Patient eligibility. So how we know someone's eligible for care is the defense enrollment el eligibility reporting, also known as DEERS. Typically DEER stuff is done in the ID card or ID card office now. So I they normally do that when you get your ID card. DEERS is that computer-based enrollment ed eligibility system. Your family members are required to be enrolled in it. Here's a form. Uniform Services Identification Privilege Card Application, DD-1172. Let's see, you gotta flash your ID card to get care. Um, if they go to non-emergency care without a um, valid ID, even if they're in the database, they have to sign a statement that they are eligible and basically it's an official statement saying why they don't have their ID. And if it's not provided within 30 days, the person's going to get billed. That's something I actually experienced a lot when I was stationed at Naval Hospital Guam. We had a lot of people that were able to sneak on base and a lot of them would try to get services. So we had to, had to do this initiative in the department, it was like 10 years ago where we were really aggressive with carding and making fill out this statement. I never saw the dollars and cents when we started doing that. It seemed like the first few weeks I was filling out like 10 of those forms a day or having the patients fill out like 10 of those forms a day. So it's something that a lot of people don't do. I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually use that after that. So some reasons for ineligibility. Sponsor's not in deers yet. Family's not in deers. Um, it, it, they, the kid aged out. Sponsors separated, spouses divorced, family member child is married, and secretary of the Navy designee. Says straight up, it is not the clerk's job to deny someone health care. That's one of those where you let your boss do that one. That's one of the cool things about being a corpsman. It is not our job to turn people away, or front desk corpsman anyways. Not our job to turn people away. It's our job to get the boss and have the boss turn them away. There's some Deers eligibility overrides. Um, so there's that form, the enrollment ID card application, the 1172. Um, if all other family members recently became eligible, if there's a new ID card, if it's ineligible due to the expired ID card, sponsor is active duty for greater than 30 days, so like your NAT guard or your um, reservist. Newborns are, will not be denied care for a period of 60 days. Um, so on the 61st day, they get shifted to TRICARE standard if they're not enrolled in Prime. Uh, and they can't get in Prime until they are on the page two. Emergency care. Um, if the sponsored duty station outside the 50 states. And survivors. There's some eligibility exceptions with DEERS. Uh, Secretary of the De Navy designee foreign military personnel. Yeah. 
Tricare, honestly, the Tricare manual is usually on the um, the bibs. Read it. Tricare is who runs our health care. As of 2021, they do. Eligibility for dental care. Let's see. Active duty members and reservists called to active duty for over 30 days are eligible for all services. Family members are eligible to enroll in TRICARE as long as the service member has at least 12 months remaining on active duty. So right there, boom. Family members are eligible to enroll in dental as long as the service member has 12 months remaining. There's some priority category codes. So 1A, members on active duty. 1B, reservists. 2, active duty family members. 3, um, members of the Senior Reserve Officer Training Corps, Category 4, retirees, Category 5, civilian employees, Category 6, everyone else. For routine dental care, just kind of describes what that is. Elective dental care examples, malocclusions, orthodontics, replacing amalgam with gold crowns, etc. QA program, that is almost always on the bibs. And boom, right here, QA program 6300.10. Um, that one is pretty easy to read, so I'm not going to touch on that too much. Talks about Joint Commission and the Met IG, which are both also on the bibs. Customer Relations, this is another one that's typically on the bibs. Um, the Met Instruction 6300.10. And the whole point of like the customer service is to improve the channels of communication between the hospital and the patients. Patient Contact, there are Patient contact representatives are appointed by the CEO, and they have their photo at the front desk. Rights and responsibilities. Um, I've seen this so many times, it makes a lot of sense. Just read it when you walk by one in a hospital. They should be posted everywhere. Medical treatment records. Man Med Chapter 16. I think in one of the other videos I misspoke. So Chapter 16 is medical records. Um, that talks about both medical and dental records. Yeah, it doesn't really say too much in this chapter. There's a, another chapter that's specifically on uh, medical records in this manual. Family advocacy talks about that. Nothing too big there. Drug and alcohol abuse prevention. I mean, I, I'm a SARB counselor, so I'm a little bit biased, but I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen an advancement exam question that had anything to do with my NEC. A man can dream one day, one day. Physical readiness program, so the PRT, OpNav instruction 6100.1, I think, or 6110.1, I think sometimes that shows up on the exam, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, by exam, I mean on the bibs. Legal implication in medical care, yeah, there's legal stuff going on, make sure you get your consent. Um, informed consent basically means that the person consents knowing what the repercussions are. So if there's a language barrier and they can't understand you and they say, yeah, that doesn't count as informed consent because they don't understand what they're consenting to. Um, the duty to inform and explain rests with the provider and that responsibility cannot be delegated. If it's an emergent situation, if I have to crack you or you're going to die, I'm going to. Um, it talks about who can consent. Their advanced directives are a thing. Talks about form sort consent, witness to consent, all consent stuff. Incident reports. Um, some of that stuff is on the bib. Quality care review reports. Yeah, I think I'm kind of losing steam on this chapter because this last chapter doesn't seem to have a lot. Um, Freedom of Information Act is a written request for the DON. A uh, naval record will be withheld only when it is exempt from disclosure. Um, and it talks about that can apply to personnel, medical, and dental or similar files. Privacy Act, do your training. HIPAA, continue to do your training. HIPAA was done in 96. PHL, a lot of this stuff is kind of read it. If you don't know what HIPAA, PI, and all that is, you should. Um, I think every, man, it seems like every couple of years I see a corpsman that goes up to mass for breaking HIPAA. Just don't do it. I know it's tempting to look at people's records. Just don't do it. Let's see. 
medical conditions and law enforcement. According to the Posse Cor Cormitatus Act, it is unlawful for the military to be used in enforcement of federal or state civil laws. This says there's some exemptions, but that's kind of outside what we got to worry about. Let's see, um, so, delivery of a patient under warrant of arrest. No patient may be released from treatment before it is medically reasonable. Reason we are a medical facility. Um, when a non-active duty patient is released from medical treatment, the facility no longer exerts any degree of control, and then all the legal stuff can happen. The commanding officer is authorized to deliver personnel to federal law enforcement who display proper credentials and represent to the command that a federal warrant has been placed for an um, active duty service member. It says at that point there's the some, ex some circumstances which that delivery can be refused, but that's in the JAG territory. Um, territory. Let's see. Talks about prisoners. Enemy prisoner of war and detained personnel are entitled to all necessary care. Non military federal prisoners are authorized only emergency care. Sexual assault. What was a UVA once upon a time? I learned a lot about that system, and that's that's a heartbreaking job, man, being a UVA, hearing uh, some of the stuff that people go through. See, so treat patient with courtesy and respect. See, so child and spouse abuse, you have to report it, report to family advocacy. And that's really it for this chapter. I think the first part of this chapter is probably the most important going over. Let me just do a quick review here. And just kind of reading the references, like Deers, what is it? Um, eligibility stuff, TRICARE, dental care eligibility, QA program, customer service program, 